Yao Ming Yan, a professor at Beijing Normal University, is going to give the first physique class to her new first year graduate students. All of them are female. Many Chinese people's last experience of calisthenics is at university. They were generally unwilling to try this activity before becoming students. But after graduation, they may look back upon it with a sense of nostalgia. Nevertheless, at this moment, they're all immersed in elegant body stretches. Most universities have a good selection of fitness facilities and equipment. Many of those who manage to stay fit while at college end up gaining weight after graduation. This is partly because of reduced access to fitness facilities or PE classes after university. Like many fitness and bodybuilding coaches, Yao has loved radio calisthenics since she was little. We are in the 70s in school, and we have started learning and learning calisthenics. We have started learning and learning by practicing radio calisthenics, Yao has developed an affinity for gymnastics. She underwent systematic training at an amateur sports school before becoming a professional gymnast. In 1982, she was admitted to Beijing Normal University, where she set out on her journey in gymnastics education. This is a class of first-year graduate students most of whom have never been involved before in such a professional type of physical training. Yao came across radio calisthenics once again in 2008, when she was assigned the task of designing the third edition of radio calisthenics for primary and middle school students. Yao was the choreographer of the production The Power of Youth, targeted at middle school students. It's a difficult target group to design choreography for. Once the choreography was completed, the first judge of Yao's work was none other than her own daughter. 我说孩子也有一些不同的那个反应啊 The ambiguous feedback from her daughter sparked Yao's consuming interest in how to make radio calisthenics more acceptable 什么感觉轻柔轻柔一些还有颜色艳丽一些漂亮一些是吧时尚一些广播操发展了六十年哈五一年到一一年六十年的那么现在都觉得在当发展到一定的时候一个东西要它的可持续性 Several years ago, Yao found that a large elasticated band was a natural prop for calisthenics. She therefore began to promote what she called elastic band radio calisthenics, 
a mashup of the principal moves used in calisthenics combined with the resistance that elastic bands provide as well as rhythmic accompaniment. What has long been occupying Yao's mind is how to make radio calisthenics more accessible and acceptable. Elastic band calisthenics was only the first step of her exploration. Two years ago, Liu Cheng was admitted to a Chicago-based university in the U.S. Now she's back in China on vacation. She hasn't practiced radio calisthenics for over a year, but Liu still takes great delight in talking about it. Liu Chang learned to skate when she was a little girl. At that time, there were very few indoor skating rinks in China. Many adults used to go skating on frozen fields. Now, more indoor skating rinks are available, and most of the people who use them are children. Liu Chang isn't a big sports fan. She's here to skate just for the TV show. Be that as it may, she still has a special bond with radio calisthenics. Just是因为从小学一年级开始一直到高二高三，就大家十多年都是这么过来的，所以就是有种习惯。如果不做它的话，可能会很怪。怎么说呢？它的动作就还是有点古板之类的，就是嗯，不是很符合就是年轻一代
Liu Chang was impressed with the sheer differences in physical quality between Chinese and American players. In China, parks are the workout location for most senior citizens. Tung Ke Ming is over 60. Every morning at 8 a.m. she goes to work. She's been running her Tong Kung Express Fitness and Dance Training Center for over a decade. Today is a free training day for the ninth edition of Radio Calisthenics. As a superstar of her elderly fitness community, she's always crowded by her followers when she arrives. Most of today's trainees are representatives of government departments or enterprises sponsored by the Beijing Federation of Trade Unions. There are also many of Tung's fans here. With the support of the Beijing Federation of Trade Unions, Tang's training center was set up inside Beijing Working People's Cultural Palace. And thanks to the joint efforts of Tang and other like-minded people, the Working People's Cultural Palace has become a true fitness center for working people. The inadequately funded training center would probably not have lasted for a decade if it hadn't been for the growing enthusiasm of Tang Keming and her co-workers. <笑>不可能说你不参加活动我开除你或者说我扣你工资他不可能有这种行政的手段来把人约束住而我们的约束就是什么就是用满腔的爱大家呢就给我们的回报也是一个关心和爱心他答应我的事儿那比行政命令可
，进入各个赛场去做啦啦队队员，没有一个人要报酬，我们也没有跟国家要一分钱。这个事儿啊，就是，呃，就是像你有这种想法的人，很多都有这种想法。说唐老师，你从哪儿找这么多人啊？实际上头呢，我们经过我们培训的人。啊，经过我们在我们这儿培训的人，就成千上万的人。一、二、三。Tang's efforts have been rewarded with both public and government recognition. An ordinary woman who is passionate about fitness dance has established a win-win situation that benefits the individual, society, and the government. 全民健身呢，我的感觉就是应该是大家来参与，而且呢，一定是自觉自愿的来参加，不是我们政府拿钱花钱来买你参加，说这次我给你钱你来参加运动会不是这个意义，而是说什么呢？你想参加这种健身活动，你自己受益，你周围的人受益，而且呢，你还能让社会有安定。对吧？社会安定也起着很大的作用。五、六、七、八、二、二、三、四、五、六、七、八。A painter was disgusted at the noise caused by radio calisthenics, and a trendsetter is looking for an up-to-the-minute version of calisthenics. A media company successfully promotes their own version via the internet. A professor attempts to make a more acceptable version. An overseas student generates new affection for radio calisthenics while abroad, and a newly born radio calisthenics program is being promoted by officialdom. Higher living standards in China have been followed by lower scores in physical fitness tests. Despite greater health awareness, people who do proper workouts remain a minority when compared with those who sit for hours in front of their computers or around the mahjong table. Promoting health and fitness is why radio calisthenics came into being and why it has lasted until the present day. Ghanjian 我们零五年的时候搞的全国场地普查，我们全国的场地总量只有八十五万个，加上我们后几年推广农民体育健身工程，现在也充其量就一百万左右，人均远远比不上西方发达国家。即使是现在这些现有的场地条件，东东西各个区域之间发展非常的平衡。广普体操它作为一项对我们的健身场地、健身条件需求。很有限，还是基本上没有什么更大需求的这么一项健身方法，在当前的形势下，确实是还有存在的价值，还有普及推广的价值。我们始终不认为，我们提到一个现这一项健身项目是包打天下，这是不科学的，也是不人本的。As one of the longest-lived national sports, radio calisthenics once really inspired the Chinese people. But it seems that its historical mission is yet to be completed. It will be our thoughts and actions which decide the future of radio calisthenics. You now have m 可以健身，可是他不一定能推得下去。可能这个项目适合这个呃人群，那个项目适合另外的人群。广播操是适合所有人群。有时候我也想这个事情啊，就说广播操，我觉得得有，没有不行。但是呢
，你做的人多不多？除了学校，就是中学、大学，部队，他们可能做，但是一般的老百姓的话，一个你广播只是要,要有音乐才叫做，没有音乐他做不了，他记不住那么多。进行集体会操啊，比赛啊，用团队的凝聚力啊，然后包括有些运动运动会的这种前后场合啊，什么我觉得都可以利用广播操的形式，以最短的时间、最高的效率来体现一个全民的健身的一种一种方式。我也愿意自由一点，我参加合唱团，我是就是我很愿意合唱，但是他老老要表演，老要集中去训练，我有点烦。这同样的，每个人都会有这种心态，真的要有，但是不要强迫。我希望是这样。那么也有可能以个性化出现，比如说叫第十套系列广播体操，那可能不仅仅是一套动作，有不同套路的出现，不同人群的、不同性别的，可能个体的、有群体的都会有。我想今后会不会有这样一种方式呈现？就像我们写字一样啊，都写的一手好字的情况下，每个人写的是不一样。都是美的，但是还有区别。Back in 1992, disturbed by the noise of radio calisthenics, painter Liu Da Hong created his work, Diagram of the Ninth Edition of Radio Calisthenics. Twenty years later, the painter has found a new perspective on the thing he used to hate so much in the past. 因为当时就就是一个很那个很很很单纯很直接的，就是一种反反叛的心理，觉得这个东西太军事化啊，太这个一致了。现在这个二十年以后完全不一样。Today's fast pace of life has influenced the painter's views on radio calisthenics. He has gradually come to believe that it would be beneficial if more workers exercised by performing radio calisthenics, even in a collective form. Thank <laughs> you.